Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and I'm so thankful that you're joining me on this, uh, this journey of awakening, the most important journey you'll ever take. A Native American brother of mine told me the, the longest journey in this world and the most important is from the head to the heart. Anyway, hopefully we're feeling this, me this message. Lesson 200 in A Course in Miracles workbook for student, the original edition. There is no peace except the peace of God. There is no peace except the peace of God. Seek you no further. You will not find peace except the peace of God. Accept this fact and save yourself the agony of yet more bitter disappointments, bleak, bleak despair, and sense of icy hopelessness and doubt. Seek you no further. There is nothing else for you to find except the peace of God, unless you seek for misery and pain. <laughs> we don't want to seek for misery and pain. It reminds me back in Lesson 185. Let me just read you that last, first little bit on I want the peace of God. To say these words is nothing, but to mean these words is everything. If you could but mean them for just an instant, there would be no further sorrow possible for you in any form, in any place or time. Heaven would be completely given back to full awareness, <laughs> memory of God entirely restored, and resurrection of all creation fully recognized. We want to recognize the resurrection of all creation. There is no peace except the peace of God. This is the final point to which each one must come at last to lay aside all hope of finding happiness where there is none and being saved by what can only hurt of making peace of chaos, joy of pain, and heaven out of hell. Attempt no more to win through losing nor to die to live. You cannot but be asking for defeat. Yet you can ask as easily for love, for happiness, and for eternal life in peace that has no ending. Ask for this, and you can only win. To ask for what you have already must succeed. Remember, this is a journey without distance. We're just becoming aware of what's already ours. To ask that what is false is true can only fail. Forgive yourself for vain imaginings. Forgive yourself for what? All the vain imaginings, the meaningless imaginings of the ego, the illusions of this world that contradict the truth and rob us of our peace. To ask for what you have already must succeed. To ask that what is false is be true can only fail. Forgive yourself for vain imaginings and seek no longer for what you cannot find. For what could be more foolish than to seek and seek and seek again for hell, when you have but to look with open eyes to find that heaven lies before you through a door that opens easily to welcome you? Come home. You have not found your happiness in foreign places and in alien forms which have no meaning to you, though you sought to make them meaningful. This world is not where you belong. This world is not where you belong. You are a stranger here, but it is given you to find the means whereby the world no longer seems to be a prison house for you or anyone. Freedom is given you where you behold, excuse me, freedom is given you where you beheld but chains and iron doors. For you must change your mind about the purpose of the world. If you would find escape, you will be bound till all the world is seen by you as blessed and everyone made free of your mistakes and honored as he is. <laughs> Let's listen, listen to that one again. Remember I tell you, forgive everybody for everything all the time? Well, look, for you must change your mind about the purpose of the world. If you would find escape, you will be bound till all the world is seen by you as blessed and everyone made free of your mistakes and honored as he is, the Holy Son of God. You made him not, 
no more yourself. And as you free the one, the other is accepted as he is. What does forgiveness do? When well, in truth it has no function and does nothing, for it is unknown in heaven. <laughs> it is only hell where it is needed, where it must serve a mighty function. Is not the escape of God's beloved Son from evil dreams that he imagines, yet believes are true, a worthy purpose? Who could hope for more while these appears... Oh, excuse me. Who could hope for more while there appears to be a choice to make between success and failure, love and fear? There is no peace except the peace of God, because he has one Son who cannot make a world in opposition to God's will and to his own, which is the same as his. Let's read that again. There is no peace except the peace of God, because he has one Son, who cannot make a world in opposition to God's will and to his own, which is the same as his. Our will is one with God, and we can't really get outside of that will, but we cannot know that we're, out, that we're in it, and we can live and think and dream that we're outside of the one will that we share with God. What could he hope to find in such a world? It cannot have reality because it never was created. Is it here that he would seek for peace? Or must he see that as he looks on it, the world can but deceive? Yet can he look to Yet can he learn to look on it another way and find the peace of God when he, when he finally recognizes that there is no conflict, there is no opposition, there is no stranger, there is no alien that is in contradiction to the one will that we share with God and ourselves. Peace is the bridge that everyone will cross to leave the world behind. Peace is the bridge that everyone will cross to leave the world behind. But peace begins within the world perceived as different and leading from this fresh perception to the gate of heaven and the way beyond. Peace is the answer to conflicting goals, to senseless journeys, frantic, vain pursuits, and meaningless endeavors. Now the way is easy sloping gently towards the bridge where freedom lies within the peace of God. Wow, isn't this beautiful? Now the way is easy, sloping gently toward the bridge where freedom lies within the peace of God. Follow your peace. I tell you that over and over. That's what he's telling us. Just check in every hour of the day. Check in. Are you at peace? Are you at peace? If not, You've got an opportunity to practice forgiveness because there's an unforgiveness hiding in your mind that the mind is uh, kind of taken over and thinks that it's in conflict with the one. Let us not lose our way again today. We go to heaven and the path is straight. Only if we attempt to wander can there be delay and needless wasted time on thorny byways. God alone is sure and he will guide our footsteps. He will not desert his son in need, nor let him stray forever from his home. Isn't that a beautiful promise? God alone is sure, and he will guide our footsteps. Can you trust him to guide? He's given you a guide to lead you in this world, the Holy Spirit. God alone is sure, and he will guide our footsteps. He will not desert his son in need, nor let him stray forever from his home. The Father calls, the Son will hear. <laughs> and that is all there is to what appears to be a world apart from God, where bodies have reality. Now is there silence, seek no further. Now there is silence, seek no further. You have come to where the road is carpeted with leaves of false desires, fallen from the trees of hopelessness you sought before. Now they are underfoot, and you look up and on toward heaven, with the body's eyes but serving for an instant longer now. Peace is already recognized at last, and you can feel its soft embrace surround your heart and mind 
with comfort and with love. Today we seek no idols. Today we seek no idols. We're not going to worship anything other than the God of peace, truth, um, the voice that speaks for love. Today we seek no idols. Peace cannot be found in them. The peace of God is ours and only this will we accept and want. Peace be to us today, for we have found a simple, happy way to leave the world of ambiguity and to replace our shifting goals and solitary dreams with single purpose and companionship. For peace is union, if it be of God. For peace is union. Peace is union. We're united with all living things that are also united with God. That's why there's no lack of peace, because we're all united in what I was telling you yesterday, the divine matrix, that connection, that, that golden thread that connects us all. For peace is union, if it be of God, we seek no further. We are close to home and draw still nearer every time we say, there is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. <laughs> wow, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let us go take a look in our uh, text reading. We're ready for chapter 22, Salvation and the Holy Relationship. And we're going to pick up in paragraph uh, 62. We left off yesterday in 63, ready for it. So we'll back up a paragraph and start in paragraph 62. And that's in section 7, Freedom and the Holy Spirit. And we'll finish that section and the chapter today. Not very, pretty, pretty short reading, a little less than a page, I think. All right, and while you're turning there, let's see if I can uh, tell you about a particular type of uh, squash out of the Baker's Creek. Yesterday we talked about the early golden summer crookneck squash. Well, today we're going to talk about fairly similar, but it's the early prolific straight neck. And it's a, uh, a 50 day also. It says it's an AAS winner from 1938. Uniform ye lemon yellow, club shaped fruit, firm flesh, is of excellent quality, tasty. And that's the early prolific straight neck summer squash. Okay, and then also I want to tell you a little bit more about yarrow, Achillea melifolium. And I found this also on uh, simplyhealth.io. And it says that it's, it's, it's astringent. And I looked up the word astringent, and it means uh, the causing the contraction of skin cells or other body tissues, or in cosmetics, makes the skin less oily. So in, in, when you're thinking about it as a wound healer, which, you know, it dates back thousands of years, being used all many, many cultures as a wound healer. Well, it constricts the, the 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 skin cells, which would help keep it help keep help stop the bleeding, and it also has an antiseptic property in it, and this this natural antiseptic qualities that it has makes it effective in all kinds of wounds, and they actually found that even with napalm, which is a terrible, um, uh, you know, skin condition when it when that hits you or hits a person and it, it's it, it's it's known to it says effective when it comes to wound it's caused by napalm i found that interesting it was pointing out that if it's good for that think how good it's for, for all the minor scrapes and abrasions that we get throughout our lives so just a little reminder that's a uh, yarrow all right let's go take a look in our reading and remember, uh, it's all day today. There is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. We want to really keep that close in mind all day today. All right, paragraph 62. If you were one with God and recognize this oneness, you would know his power is yours. But you will not remember this while you believe attack of any kind means anything. Wow. 
So do we believe attack of any kind means anything? We're not going to have the peace of God if we do. It is unjustified in any form because it has no meaning. The only way it could be justified as if one of you were separate from the other and all were separate from your creator. For only then would it be possible to attack a part of the creation without the whole, the son without the father, and to attack another without yourself or hurt yourself without the other feeling pain. And this belief you want, yet wherein lies its value except in the desire to attack in safety. <laughs> attack is neither safe nor dangerous. It is impossible. Can we accept that, that attack is really impossible and straighten out our minds to, to where we don't have to resort to attack because we can't be separate from each other or God. Therefore, we can't attack. It has no meaning. Only in illusions, and we don't need illusions, okay? And this is so because the universe is one. You would not choose attack on its reality if it were not essential to attack to see it, separate from its creator. And thus it seems as if love could attack and become fearful. 63. Only the different can attack. So you conclude, because you can't attack, you must be different. Yet does the Holy Spirit explain this differently? Because you are not different, you cannot attack. Either position is a logical conclusion, if only the different can attack. Either could be maintained, but never both. The only question to be answered to decide which must be true is whether you are different. From the position of what you understand, you seem to be and therefore can attack. Of the alternatives, this seems more natural and more in line with your experience. And therefore, it is necessary that you have other experiences more in line with truth to teach you what is natural and true. 64. This is the function of your holy relationship, to see that we are one. You, what you do to your brother is you're doing it to yourself. You, we want to start seeing that we aren't different, and therefore we can't attack, because what we do is what we do to ourselves. We're, we're all connected. For what one thinks the other will experience with him. What can this mean except your minds are one? For what one thinks in a holy relationship, what one thinks, the other will experience with him. What can this mean except your minds are one? Look not with fear upon the hap look not with fear upon this happy fact, and think not that it lays a heavy burden on you. For when you have accepted it with gladness, you will realize that your relationship is a reflection of the union of the Creator and his son. From loving minds there is no separation, and every thought in one brings gladness to the other, because they are the same. And every thought in one brings gladness to the other, because they are the same. Joy is unlimited, because each shining thought of love extends its being and creates more of itself. There is no difference anywhere in it, for every thought is like itself. There is no difference anywhere in it, for every thought is like itself. The light that joins you shines throughout the universe. And because it joins you, so it makes you one with your Creator. And in Him is all creation joined. Would you regret you cannot fear alone when your relationship can also teach the power of love is there, which makes all fear impossible. Do not attempt to keep a little of the ego with this gift. Do not attempt to keep a little of the ego with this gift. For it was given you to be used and not obscured. What teaches you, you cannot separate, denies the ego. What teaches you, you cannot separate, denies the ego. 
Let truth decide if you be different or the same and teach you which is true. <laughs> All right. Wow, what a beautiful, perfect reading for our further understanding and our, our lesson for today. There is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. So, you know, where love is, there can't be lack of peace because peace and love go together. And we realize that love is the connecting link between all of God's creation and that there's no one part that's distinct and separate from any other part. So the only way you could attack, you can't in mind because that's union or oneness with God and everyone, all creation. But when you imagine or believe or interpret or rearrange facts and make them and interpret them as that you're separate from someone, now you have to defend yourself. And that's why we want to learn that in my defenselessness, my safety lies. <laughs> okay, because then we're laying down that idea that we're separate. And in our holy relationship, we're starting to recognize that, that, that our, our thoughts are joined. And um, anyway, hopefully you're starting to get a little sense of this whole reality that, uh, that we're one with each other and God. All right, so until tomorrow, be sure to do your two longer practice periods, morning and evening, and then your hourly remembrance. And tell yourself this throughout the day, every hour of the day. There is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. <laughs> there is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. All right. Thank you all so much. There is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. Here I sat down in front of this uh, uh, Corcus rubra tree, a black oak. And over here behind me, is a uh, white oak, a uh, Corcus alba. And I, I, I don't know, I just thought I might I'll show you. Let's take just a minute as we say the lesson one last time, look up at the treetops and get a sense of our... Uh... our oneness with God and each other. As we say, there is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. There is no peace except the peace of God. And I am glad and thankful it is so. <laughs>